good morning title of the module is dimensional modeling this module consists of several lectures in this module we discuss principles of dimensional modeling in what way dimension modeling is different from traditional entity relationship modeling different kinds of schema models the concept of data mart different types of dimensions different types of fact tables and facts and finally we conclude this lecture by highlighting various steps that are associated with the dimensional modeling analytical requirements and subject orientation are the key differences between the data warehouses and operational structures to build a data warehouse we must map data to subject oriented information by identifying business subjects relationship between the business subjects and different attributes that are needed to represent each business subject the process of modeling is an iterative in nature and various tools exist today in the market to assist the modeling oracle warehouse builder informatica or some of the modeling tools for building a, a data warehouse and also erwin is a modeling tool for building a database relative data sizes in a data warehouse the slide shows how size of data differ in data warehouses for instance if we consider several years of data such a data can be classified as older detailed data current detailed data lightly summarized data and highly summarized data and so on if you take sales data we have sales detail data during the year 1985 to 2005 and are scattered at various sources the old sales for instance sales detail current data during 2006 2010 are stored in the disk this we call as current data region wise weekly sales data for 4 years from 2006 to 2010 are stored in the form of weekly sales data weekly sales by product and sub product for 4 years from 2006 to 2007 are also stored here as a weekly sales data monthly sales data by product for 2006 to 2010 are stored in this diagram as monthly sales data by product similarly monthly sales by region and so on typical data warehouse system is shown on the slide data warehouse is developed by using different databases in this diagram there are three different levels top level is known as usage level It's nothing but who are the stakeholders going to use the data warehouse we can use the data in data warehouse to generate mis reports ad hoc reports in fact you can as well do deeper analysis using data mining by considering the data warehouse data bottom layer consists of different data sources which we can as well denote as databases data in a data warehouse is either derived or selected from these data sources data sources are heterogeneous in nature the middle level is known as the data warehouse the important issue is how do we organize the data in the data warehouse in other words how do we model the data in a data warehouse this is a topic which we discuss in this lecture that is to say how do we structure 
the data in a data warehouse, what are the different schemes available to organize the data in a data warehouse will be covered in this lecture. Let us quickly go through the features of the data warehouse. As per the architecture of the data warehouse, we have different heterogeneous sources. These sources are used to select the data into the staging area where we clean, we transform, we validate and summarize or aggregate the data and finally populated the data into the data warehouse as per the needs of the business users. Data warehouse is a subject oriented, integrated, time variant and non-volatile collection of data enabling management decision making. Actually, the dimension modeling starts after collecting the requirements of data design for building a data warehouse. There are several phases prior to the dimension modeling. Dimension modeling is an effective, efficient and successful technique to design enterprise data warehouse and distributed data marts. Database schemas are used for maximizing the performance. So, the main modeling technique used while building the data warehouse is termed as dimension modeling. A group of data elements form a data structure. Logical database, logical, I repeat, logical data design include the determination of the various data elements that are needed and combination of the data elements into structures of the data. Logical data design also includes the relationships among the data structures from requirements to design. The slide shows various steps of designing the data. First of all, requirements gathering step initiates to gather the requirements. Then these requirements are documented in the form of requirements definition document. Then we design the data. Ultimately, the outcome of the data design process is nothing but a, a logical model. So, the information package diagrams form the basis for logical data design for the data warehouse. So, the data design process ultimately results in a dimensional data model. So, that means from the requirements gathering phase, the data is documented in detail in requirements definition document. A set of information package diagram is one of the most essential document used for dimensional modeling. These basically use it to show metrics, business dimensions and hierarchies with individual business dimensions. Modeling. For any kind of modeling, first of all, we have to understand how to design a logical model. So, logical model is a representation of business problem without considering the implementation techniques and organization structure into account. From the database point of view, we generally use entity relationship modeling to build a logical structure for a given application. The feature of logical model are complete, correct and consistent representation of business requirement. Removal of redundancy does not presuppose data granularity and it is a, not an implementation of the product and is an independent of DBMS. The slide shows an example of ER model and also an example for a dimensional model. Left side, the, left side of the slide is an ER model. Right side, the right side of the slide shows the dimensional model. In the dimensional model, we have different dimensions and facts without considering all the details. In the data warehouse literature, we call this model as a star schema model. We study in detail about the design of a star schema in a subsequent lecture. 
If you see the ER model, consists of basically the entities. For example, customer is an entity, product is an entity, and also relationships. Cardinalities among the relationships are also represented in the basic ER model. But if you observe the dimensional modeling diagram shown on the right side of the slide, the dimensions are linked to central fact table to record the measures which we call them as facts. Whenever we convert the logical model into a physical model, we translate the specification of what is logical represented into physical organization of a repeat into a physical implementation of the logical data. The main feature I repeat the key features considered while translating into physical model are shown on the slide. They are it must be optimized, efficient, buildable, robust and flexible. We now discuss the key differences between the dimensional modeling and ER modeling. The process of building dimensional model is termed as dimensional modeling. Dimensional modeling is a form of analytical design in which data is pre-classified as a fact or a dimension. Such a representation improves the performance by matching the suitable data structure to the queries. For example, one, one query is shown on the slide, list the periods, total sales, volume and revenue by product, by business unit and by package. So to answer this query, the dimension modeling provides a suitable structure in such a way that the performance of the query is very good. Logical data modeling is the first step towards the building the data warehouse. Dimension modeling is a logical modeling design technique often used for data warehouses. It is a logical design structure. I repeat, it is a logical design technique to structure the business dimensions and metrics that are analyzed along these dimensions. Data is always organized around business processes rather than the business entities. In databases, we design databases by considering business entities into account. Dimensional modeling is, can also be termed as a data modeling approach that stresses ease of use and good performance. We can also say that this is an approach of choice for most data warehouse teams when designing dimension model for end user access. Also, it was proved to provide high performance for queries and analysis. For any design process, requirement specification is important. What are the expectations from the data warehouse? How much ease user is interested to perform analysis? Based on the requirements, how best we can model the data in data warehouse is driven by data modeling in such a way that the query performance is optimized. In view of the stacks, dimension modeling acts as a basic building block in designing of data warehouse. That is to say, it is an approach of choice for most data warehouse teams when designing a structure in such a way that it is easy for end user access. It is easy for end user to access the desired data for analysis. What are the basic building blocks in a dimensional model? The basic building blocks for any dimensional model are facts and measures dimensions. Fact table is used to store business info information and dimension tables determine the contextual background for the facts. The central table is nothing but a fact table individual sales records. The fact table consists of mostly raw numeric items. Rows are very narrow and a few columns exist at most. But number of rows are very large in the fact table, maybe in terms of millions to a billion 
rows. But access to the fact table is always made via the dimensions only. For example, customer ID, branch ID, date key are the keys in the deposit fact table, total amount and number of number of visits are the measures. Dimension table, typical dimensions are product, customer, salesperson, time periods, geographic region such as markets, cities, etc. are examples for dimensions. As I mentioned earlier, dimension tables contain the details for each dimension. Product details, customer details, salesperson details, etc. They are small tables and these dimension tables are joined to fact table by a foreign key. For example, customer ID is a foreign key in the fact table. Product ID is a foreign key, etc. The slide shows a simple example for time dimension table, year, month, quarter, week, day, hour, minutes is an example for a dimension table time. So what is a dimension? Definition of a dimension. A dimension is a finite domain attribute defining minimum fact granularity. Attribute type generally alphanumeric in nature. A dimension table is a denormalized relational table that includes a surrogate key and a set of attributes belonging to a hierarchy. Whenever an attribute, a repeat, whenever attributes unique values are automatically generated by a, a database management system, then those values are termed as surrogate key values. So fact table is basically used to store business information. The term dimension represents a single category or a perspective by which associated facts are interpreted and understood. For example, store is a perspective by which sales are understood. It is the answer to the question, where did the sales occur? A dimension table is a table that holds a list of attributes or qualities of the dimension most often used to queries and reports. The store dimension can have attributes such as street, block number, city, region and country where it is located in addition to its store name. Every row in the dimension table represents a unique instance of that dimension and has a unique identifier called the dimension key. Features of dimension tables. Dimension tables are basically used to identify, I repeat, dimension tables are identified by answering the question, how do business people describe the data that results from a business process? We can consider dimension table as an entry into the fact table. Dimension table is a denormalized in order to reduce the number of joins in the resulting queries. Generally, the attributes in the dimension table are static, descriptive fields describing the aspects of the dimension. We must design dimension tables to hold infrequent changes to attribute values over time using slowly changing dimension concepts. Of course, another important feature is you can use the dimension tables information in group by class of SQL queries and it simplifies many SQL queries with group by class. Every column in the dimension table is typically either the primary key or dimensional attribute. Every non-key column in the dimension table is typically used in the group by class of an SQL query. So that means if you take any row in a dimension table, the row represents a unique instance of that dimension and has a unique identifier called the dimension key. We now discuss what is the difference between the ER diagram versus dimensional model. OLTP system design generally uses ER diagrams for modeling the database. ER diagram consists of basic entities, relationships, keys and cardinalities. The slide shows how to represent 
all these components in your model. Each entity is associated with the key and several attributes associated with each entity. Different entities are connected through relationship and cardinality is also used to present the type of relationship. It can be either one to one or one to many or many to many relationship. In fact, the metadata is also used while designing OLTP system. Metadata consists of the attributes, entities and relationships are described in the data dictionary. Basically, ER model focuses on discrete business entities, their attributes and their relationships. Sound ER modeling technique leads to normalized data models. The purpose of using normalization is to control the redundancy and to overcome the insertion, deletion and update anomalies. But in the ER modeling, we do not have an explicit way of representing time. It means there is no explicit relevance for time exists in the ER modeling. This is one of the major influencing requirement for data warehouse. The entity relationship model, model is commonly used in design of relational databases where a database schema consists of set of entities and relationships between the entities. Such a model is quite appropriate for OLTP system to manage the day-to-day -day operations. However, a data warehouse requires a concise subject-oriented schema to facilitate online data analysis. Design of models for data warehouses are different from ER models. In data warehouses, most popular Schema models are star schema, snowflake schema, and fact constellation schema. So the main focus in dimension modeling is business process and intended to read, intended for read-only access of data, and the data is highly denormalized and are time-oriented. The slide shows the two popular uh, structures. The structure shown on the right hand side of the bottom right hand side is a popular structure called a star schema. We now discuss the differences between the dimensional modeling and entity relationship modeling. Dimension model is basically considered into account to optimize the query performance, whereas ER model is basically used to optimize the insert, update and delete operations. That means we are designing a schema in such a way that the basic DML operations are executed efficiently. The number of tables will be more in ER modeling because we use the normalization process to overcome the redundancy and design is free from anomalies. But in the case of dimensional model, there will be less number of tables, but more indexes and less joins will be there. The reason is denormalization is the main main objective considered into account in the dimensional model. Redundancy is not so important in the dimensional modeling. There is no need to reduce the redundancy. That is the reason why denormalization is the key feature used in modeling the dimensions. I repeat, in the dimension model. Dimension modeling is easy to understand, whereas the year model is difficult to comprehend because we have to consider the different kinds of dependencies and the designer also has to fine tune the schemas which are suitable to run the day-to-day -day operations. Incorpor incorporating changes into the design is not easy in the ER model, but whereas in the dimensional model, accommodating changes in the design is easy and flexible. Tables in the ER model are quite normalized and I can divide complicated table into a collection of smaller tables. In fact, there can be several collections of smaller tables. Many small tables are combined here together into a single large table which we call as a denormalized here in the dimensional model. The modeling technique used for OLAP is the dimensional modeling and ER modeling is generally used for OLTP applications. 
there are no prescribed methods exist to handle the changes in the entities but in the dimensional model there are prescribed methods to handle changes in the dimensions by taking different types of dimensions and facts into account now we discuss what are the different uh, data warehouse schema models as i mentioned earlier star schema is the most widely used and popular schema model in the dimensional modeling other schema models are snowflake schema and fact constellation schema the slide shows the structure of the star schema there will be a central fact table this fact table consists of two components set of keys and set of measures which we call here as data columns and various dimension tables are linked to this central fact table note that the fact table consists of set of keys and set of measures here the number of rows in a fact table will be enormously large because when you these measures are computed over the combination of dimensional table columns i repeat the number of rows in a fact table will be enormously large because the numerical measures that are described in the fact table are computed based on the combinations of the dimension tables as i mentioned earlier dimensions are perspectives store is one dimension product is another dimension customer time and payment type they are all different dimension tables this slide shows only the description of store and product dimension tables we can as well describe the other dimension tables for customer time payment type in a similar way so every dimension is associated with uh, a key and set of attributes for example here in the store dimension store key is a key and store name store address city state region country or the attributes in a similar way product key is a key for product dimension table product id product name product group brand and department or the attributes of the product dimension table all the keys are termed here as a surrogate keys and are linked to the respective dimension tables fact tables will have large larger set of entity entries than the dimension table entries slide shows how to link four dimension tables with a single central fact table so in a star schema single fact table is joined to a set of dimension tables and it is simple and concise and the structure is symmetric it is extensible and optimized grain of the star schema is a grain of the central fact table grain means at what level aggregation or summarization is computed and stored in the fact table in the form of measures store sales is the fact table linked to five dimensions namely store payment type product customer and time the description of time store product are described along with their attributes and keys in a similar way you can describe for customer as well as payment type star schema does not capture the hierarchies directly here hierarchies are not shown it only represents the linking of the dimension tables to the central fact table the slide shows another example for star schema bank deposits fact table so the fact table deposit scheme number customer id branch id date key or the surrogate keys and total amount is the measure so cust id is a key of customer deposit scheme number is a key of scheme date key is a key of date and branch id is a key of branch and total amount is the measure here there are other schema models namely snowflake schema and fact constellation schema snowflake schema is a refinement of star schema where some of the dimensional hierarchy is normalized into a set of smaller dimension tables 
forming a shape similar to snowflake. A snowflake schema is a set of tables comprised of a single central fact table surrounded by normalized dimension hierarchies. Each dimension level is represented in a table. Snowflake schema implement dimensional data structures with fully normalized dimensions. So if you observe the snowflake schema, there is no redundancy exists in the snowflake schema because the tables are decomposed in the form of a snowflake to control the redundancy. So normalization principles are used here, here to divide a dimension table into hierarchical collection of smaller sub-dimension tables. That is the reason why there is no redundancy in the snowflake schema. When multiple fact tables share dimension tables, then we can consider those things as a collection of stars and therefore we call the constellation schema as a galaxy schema or fact constellation schema. Snowflake schema, as I mentioned, represents a dimensional hierarchy directly by normalized tables. For example, here city is hierarchically divided and region is the hierarchically represented as a collection of cities. In a similar way, other dimension tables also can be decomposed further. In this example, only city is a hierarchical relationship exists for the city dimension table. Because a region can contain several cities, so the information about that region informa information, I repeat, because a region can have several cities, the information about each region is stored only at one, only once. So in the process, we reduce the redundancy here. Another example for snowflake schema is shown in the slide, bank deposit example. There is a central fact table consisting of four dimensional keys and one measure, namely total amount. Time dimension consists of date key, date, month and year as the attributes, but a time can be hierarchically organized as a collection of months and a collection of months can be considered as a year. So there is a snowflake structure exists for the time. Similarly, snowflake structure exists for the branch, branch dimension. There can be several branches in a city and there can be several cities in a state and several states in a country. So hierarchically decomposed the branch information over cities, states and countries. And other two dimensions are also hierarchically represented, namely customer. I repeat, the other dimension customer is also hierarchically represented by there can be several customers in each city. So customer details are divided into two parts by putting a level as city ID and city description. Example for fact constellation schema. In this example, we have two different fact tables, credit fact table and deposit fact table. Credit fact table is used to represent the measures amount and NPA underscore amount over the dimensions customer, branch and NPA. Then deposit fact table represents the balance as a measure, but if you observe, customer dimension is a common dimension shared by credit fact table as and deposit fact table. So therefore, we can consider this as a galaxy of schema. Each one is a, a star schema, but they are linked by sharing a common dimension, namely customer dimension here. Another example, here we have sales fact table and shipping fact table. This example, location dimension, item dimension, time dimension are shared between the two fact tables. 
sales pack table and shipping pack table and the measures are completed in the sales pack table are units number score sold dollars number score sold and the average sales whereas the measures completed in the shipping pack table are dollars number score cost and units under score shipped. We now discuss in detail about the properties of dimension tables and pack tables. There are two ways to model a star schema. We can start the dimension tables design first and then we can design the pack table. The other way is design a pack table first and then model dimension tables. We discuss with an example the star schema design based on the second approach. In fact table, each record contains primary key, which is a concatenation of foreign keys to dimension tables, and facts are measures uniquely identified by the primary key. In the table shown on the slide, each fact record represents one line item on an invoice to a customer. In order to design a fact table, first we must identify what kind of measures the user needs. Such measures can be identified by conducting user interviews and requirements gathering steps. STAR is a way to model transform transactions. Each transaction is an invoice. If we want users to be able to drill down the transactions that make up their reports, they may wish to see lists of actual invoices. Sometimes invoice numbers are integral to this investigation. So the slide shows a primary key for our fact table design, product key, store key, date key, payment type key acts as a primary key for this record. I repeat acts as a primary key for this table. This key is identified by concatenating the foreign keys of the respective concatenation of foreign keys to dimension tables. Facts or measures are uniquely identified by this four column key. In star schema, we can model at any possible level of detail. For instance, we could store information at a weekly level, not at a daily level. The level detail captured in a fact table is termed as level granularity or the grain of the table. Storing data at the most detail level results in a much higher disk requirements because we require more number of data, more number of rows to be stored, so therefore it requires more space. It is always possible to recreate the aggregate summary data from the detailed data, but we cannot recreate details from summaries. So therefore, grain must be decided very carefully while designing the fact table. Each record in a fact table contains a primary key. Each fact or measure is uniquely identified by the primary key. A fact table is alone is useless in the star schema design. What does it mean that say we sold 16 units of product key 14 to a customer 17, 14 on date key 000701. It means nothing until we can decode these foreign key values, you won't get uh, the actual meaning associated with these numbers. That is the reason why the dimension tables are very much essential to convey the meaning associated with each fact. 
So therefore, dimension table design provides a meaning to each fact. This meaning to each fact is described by identifying appropriate dimension elements. The sales table in our example is joined to at least one dimension table to provide a result set. Suppose if we want to perform a query on total sales for a particular product, we need to join the sales table with the product table. By plugging the name of data elements into a sentence of the form, data element 1, data element 2, etc., etc., broken down by data element 1, data element 2, etc., etc., using this sentence, we can decide whether the data element is a measure or an element of a dimension. If the data element in question falls before the word broken, then it is most likely a measure. Otherwise, it is likely that an element of a dimension. Dimension tables are characterized by several general features. We discuss first the key feature which is used in dimension table is the denormalization. As I mentioned earlier, dimension tables are highly denormalized. The slide shows the difference between the normalized tables versus the denormalized table. Highly denormalized means all the information regarding each dimension element appears on a single record in the dimension table. When loading dimension tables, we join many source tables together to put the result into one flat denormalized table. Each record in this table fully describes a dimension element. That is to say, we are pre-joining tables together satisfying query time resource requirements with the load time resources. Normalized and denormalized designs for the same data, I repeat, normalized and denormalized design for the product dimension table are shown on this slide. If you see the denormalized table, there is only one record exists for the product, which combines all the properties that are associated with the product. We are grouping everything together in a single record. But whereas in the case of normalized, the product is divided into several subtables to control the redundancy. Features of dimension table. The various features of dimension tables are wide, short, dimension table uses surrogate keys, it contains links to corresponding records in source tables, contains additional date and active flag fields. Wide. Dimension table is wide. Compared to tables used in the traditional database applications, dimension tables are much wider. Wide means what? Width-wise dimension tables are wide. That means we have more number of columns in the dimension table. Here, wide means it has a number of columns, large number of columns. Wider columns provide more descriptive information. Wide dimension tables provide more attributes that can be viewed and summarized. Dimension tables are short. Dimension tables are far shorter than the fact table. For instance, each product may be sold thousands of times and does appear in thousands of fact records. Each appears in only once in the dimension record. That means each product appears one and only once in the dimension record. Commercial databases such as Oracle say can join very easily a short table with a use table. When the relationship between the two is a foreign key based. Hence, short dimension tables are very critical. In the presence of joins, the star schema design uses relatively less number of resources as compared to mini joins in other modeling approaches. Then, third feature is dimension tables use surrogate keys. 
A key with no independent business meaning is termed as surrogate key. These are usually just a series of sequential numbers assigned to be the primary key for a table. These are useless for end users and are never queried by the end users. Surrogate keys are mainly used for maintaining the uniqueness among the records automatically by the database system. Surrogate keys are used to provide very efficient relationships between the tables. Creating and working with surrogate keys is more beneficial than using business keys. You can capture dimension history by inserting multiple rows into dimension tables with the business key but with the different information on them. The most important benefit of using surrogate keys is it provides better join performance than business keys. Say for example, if the date dimension table contains 5 calendar years of data, then it contains approximately 1826 rows. We can store these number in 2 bytes or less. Instead, if we use the calendar date as the key of the table, then we need more storage space for each value. Because of this, the system has to spend more time when the table is joined with the pack table. Links to source tables help the dimension table update process. And also dimension tables consists of additional date fields and active flag fields. These fields will help primarily with system maintenance rather than end user queries. Date field indicate when it was last update or when the record is inserted etc. They help in cases when the data is audited. Active flag field is useful for dimension table. This field indicate which is the current definition of the dimension element. Dimension hierarchies. Store and product here are the two dimensions. The third dimension table is time, which is composed of the attribute hierarchy, date, month, quarter, year. There is a hierarchical relationship exists between these four attributes, date, month, quarter, year. Collection of dates is a month, collection of months is a quarter, collection of quarters is a year. The store dimension has an attribute hierarchy of store. There will be several stores in each district. Set of districts will be there in a region and all regions form the total stores. Similarly, product. Products can be grouped as different brands. There will be several products in each brand and a manufacturer can manufacture several brands of products and all products manufactured by different manufacturers are nothing but the total products. So the dimension hierarchy play a key role in the dimension modeling. We can see that the granularity of data is products sold in stores by day. We use this hierarchy extensively in OLAP. Let us discuss some interactive questions on the topic covered so far. We discuss the differences between the data warehouse schema and database schema. Each cyclic difference exists in the fact cancellation schema. Can two dimension tables refer each other? How Snowflake minimizes redundancy and the difference between the normalized design and denormalized design. Sir, I would like to ask, how is data warehouse schema design different from database schema design and what are its advantages? Entity relationship modeling is used in designing database schema. You all know that ER model is basically used to represent the entities and the relationships among the entities. Whatever the schema you 
design using this ER modeling and normalization techniques, that schema is always useful and appropriate for online transaction processing systems. Coming to the data warehouse point of view, data warehouse needs concise subject oriented schema to facilitate online data analysis. Such a schema design is possible only when you take subject orientedness into account. That means, you are integrating the data by considering all the data used by various applications in an enterprise by using the concept of subject orientedness. Coming to the second question, the key advantages of using data warehouse are easy data analysis, presentation of results in variety of formats, then another advantage is offloading of queries from OLTP system, fast and flexible report production. From the application point of view, databases concentrates on application based integration, whereas data warehouse concentrates on subject oriented integration. This way you can compare data warehouse and its advantages with the databases. So, I want to ask that can there be a cyclic reference in fact consolidation schema and can two dimension tables refer to each other? There is no cyclic reference in fact consolidation schema. In fact, it is not allowed. For each star schema, it is possible to construct fact consolidation schema. How, how it is possible? By splitting the original star schema into more star schemas and each one describes facts on another level of dimension hierarchies. So, therefore, the fact constellation architecture contains multiple fact tables that share many dimension tables. The main shortcoming of the fact constellation schema is a more complicated design because many variants for particular kinds of aggregation must be considered and selected. Moreover, dimension tables are still large. That is why there is no question of arising cyclic reference in fact constellation schema. But however, multiple fact tables can share the same dimensions. To answer our next question, can two dimensional tables refer to each other? So, the answer is no. You, two dimensional tables can never refer to each other. Any reference is always done via the central fact table only. I have a doubt. In fact, constellation is schema. Can two di dimensional tables belonging to the same fact table refer to each other? As per the design of fact constellation schema, two dimensional tables can be linked into more than one fact table. But dimension table cannot be referred each other. Therefore, two dimensional tables belonging to the same fact table cannot refer each other. How does snowflake schema minimize redundancy? As you all know, snowflake schema is a variation of the star schema and visually it looks like a snowflake. In this schema, some dimension tables are normalized. Normalized means what? It breaks the data into even more sub dimension tables. The main aim of normalizing dimension tables is to reduce the redundancies. But of course, this may conserve more space or memory. On the other hand, efficiency in browsing may be lost in the snowflake design due to the inclusion of 
more joints needed for the querying process. Therefore, this schema is not so popular as the star schema due to this reason. So, performance wise, star schema is much faster than snowflake schema. Sorry. Conclusions. In this module, we discussed principles of dimensional modeling, in what way the dimensional modeling is different from the traditional ER modeling. We also discussed different kinds of schema models. And finally, we concluded this lecture by highlighting the features of dimension table along with the interactive questions. Thank you.